I mean, what, what made her do this horrible act? Uh, she's admitting it. We're not saying alleged, right? She admits she did this. She just says, my mind was diseased and don't hold me responsible. Well, listen, I I'm not buying it either. I, I can't get inside her mind and tell you what triggered this and made her commit these horrible acts. Maybe she was having some money trouble. Maybe she wanted to be wealthier than she is. But the bottom line is she took acts that were calculated to defraud people. She was successful at doing it. And it really, really is a horrible thing which she committed to the community, her friends, and her family. So, Mike, I mean, what, what is your assessment of her asserting an insanity defense here. I guess that's all that's left for her. Right? I mean, we still have um, uh, to know what happens, what the jury does with this case. But is this a person, yeah. Adam, who deserves to um, to be incarcerated? It does carry prison time. Well, that's a great point because that is something I've thought about for a little while understanding this case. I've represented people who have stolen substantially a more amount of money than this young lady did. And I was actually very surprised to hear that not only is she facing the three years, but that during the plea discussions, the state would only offer her three years. Uh, I mean, I'm very, very surprised she's looking at prison time, especially with the amount of money that we're dealing with here. And I think all of that is a product of the fact that this case remained in the community where the crime occurred mm -hmm. and was not taken out of this community mm -hmm. so that people who were not defrauded or who but did not know somebody who was defrauded sorry to, could have sorry been to cut you off. Adam. You're absolutely right, but I, uh, we're out of time, gentlemen. So I want to thank you for your comments.